Um, this right here is going to touch on some electrical stuff. So some of you guys haven't done electrical yet. You may, you know, not quite be acclimated to some of what I'm going to show you, but it's not a big deal. It's not too hard to figure out. Electrical is not all that complicated. It's a one wire at a time proposition, right? You understand what each wire does. No matter. This right here is a 1997 Ford Ranger, and I've you know done a presentation or two on it before in previous semesters. And when I was at the dealership, this one came in, and the guy basically came in there, and the way that the ticket was written was that the yellow ABS light comes on. That's the way the ticket was written, you know, yellow ABS light comes on. Okay, so uh, they give it to this guy, and this guy flashes the codes, basically. This is how it's wired up, by the way. Uh, the mechanic wasn't me to start with. He flashed the code, and he got something that he felt like was a coolant level sensor because that's the code that's what that code usually meant. So he ordered a reservoir that comes with a coolant level sensor and he popped it on there and uh, you know checked it out and reflashed it. There was no code there. He put it outside. Um, the guy pulled it back, back around in there and he says uh, this is still here. The problem's still here. So well, we didn't see it happen. Well what he did was when he matched the park brake the ABS light came on. Now this is how this is uh, it didn't come on until we matched the park brake. Though. So here we got a, a sort of an overview. It, I got it out of Service Life magazine whenever Ford was publishing that. And uh, this is a very simple and concise wiring schematic of the whole system. It's all there is to it. Now you notice there's a, a proportioning valve switch here. Uh, there's a, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about that a little later. Uh, there's a low vacuum switch. There's a park brake switch. There's a brake warning light. This is, they tried to give you one that would just work on everything. And your diagnostic connector from your keep alive fuse is right here. You notice it's only got one wire going through it. In the early days of these Ford AVS systems, they made it mandatory on pickups and vans in 1987. And this was 10 years after that. Was Initially, they had the diagnostic connector without any power going to it. And all you had to do, you know, when your code was flashing, if you grounded that just briefly, then your warning light, your RAB's warning light down here, would blink that code out. There's only 16 different codes anyway. And a 16 means everything's okay. Uh, but all the rest of them, you know, there's a list of the codes that, you know, I can give you if you're interested in that. And of course, you got a RAB fuse, ignition switch, and several little fuses in there. You've got your stop lamps and all that. That's just how it's worked. That's RAB's two. Now, what they did, what the problem was, whenever you were driving it, if the problem happened, you'd see the ABS light come on and flash out a code. And if you stopped the thing, or if, well, if the light, I'm sorry, if it came on, the airbag would flash a code out of the If it just came on, before you switched it off, somebody needed to flat, get it, you know, trigger it and flash the code out by grounding this little terminal right here, going to pin 12, and then it would flash out the code, and then you'd kind of know which way to go. Usually it was the sensor in the rear end that was what was wrong with it. And that would be your uh, vehicle speed sensor right there. And you see that basically went between 10 and 3, and if it saw too much resistance on that, that would be a code 9, and I think a code 10 was if it detected that there was metal filing stuck to it, and it was, this thing right here whirls past that sensor, that's one of those wheels, and all that. So anyway, whenever it sees the wheels, it's looking right in the middle at that thing so that it, it's just stopping the back wheels from sliding, you know, and gives you that. All right, so, here we go. This one here had these, these lights on, that red brake light, well, that ABS light, you know, you, this is where the hell they look on the schematic. Uh, the customer didn't mention to the service writer that both the warning lamps came on when he applied the park brake. He said, well, he just happened to miss that. Either that or the service writer, it was kind of funny because that's where this was published in Motor Age. And uh, this was in June of 2000, it was published in Motor Age. Uh, the service writer came out there to me and he goes, when I read this thing, you made this sound like it was all my fault. <laughs> well, either the guy didn't tell him everything or he didn't write anything. This was the same service writer that wrote a work order one time that said, windshield won't separate rain from water. Sam, what are you going to do with that? You know what I'm saying? Okay. This right here, we get the codes to flash. I'm telling you, he seriously wrote that. But I mean, he was just in a hurry, you know. All right. So fuse number nine on this particular one supplies power to the rails keep alive. Now, this is the same as the diagnostic connector right here. It's got a black orange wire, it's got a red wire, and this is what's cool about that. On well, some of them, it actually shares that with the one that feeds the brake pedal. 
And so what you can do, see on this one here, it doesn't uh, typically, but on some of them you could actually pull the fuse that feeds it and then tap the brake and it would start flashing the code. You know, now this one wasn't like that. But anyway, uh, you could basically pull that fuse uh, with the ignition switch and then ground the coal side. There it is, Gonzalez. All right. With the ignition switch and ground the coal side and, you know, where pin 2 is not powered up, no codes will be out to it. Uh, so, anyway, so what you got here is a, a little schematic here, and that gives you the little bit more detail on that particular thing. That fuse right there is this fuse right here, right? And you're going on the Ranger that we got out here, you'll see a red wire going together with a black orange wire over the right side. There is a sheet on this about flashing the codes on the Ranger. Some of you, I think, may have done it, but I'm not sure. It seemed like I helped somebody with it the other day. And so that gives you the, uh, that's your keep alive power revs test. Now, here's the other thing. This keeps the codes from getting lost. Also, if you unplug this with the key off, you're going to lose whatever code was stored. If it's an intermittent code, that's really aggravating. Um, but uh, anyway, here we go. So reservoir fluid level switch is right here. You notice there's two colored wires and there's one black wire going to that little switch. It's really cool to understand how that thing's wired up. If that connector's unplugged, the ABS lamp will come on, but the red brake lamp won't because no ground's being provided for the red brake lamp bulb. But with the switch plugged in, the switch grounds the circuit when the fluid level drops to a predetermined level. And that provides pin two with pin two on the on the controller with power and it shuts down the controller and uh, illuminates the ABS lamp. If the ABS lamp's on, you don't have any anti-lock brakes. This is how that works. You see those two wires? You got a tan yellow, you got a dark green yellow, and there's a ground right here. Now, when this thing gets low on fluid in here, it grounds both of those. And not only does it turn on that red brake light, but it also kills the power going to pin two. You see there? Well, that's really important to understand on this system. Closes the low fluid level. And this reservoir was what the guy replaced because he figured this was what the problem was. Because usually that's what it was. And he wasn't playing on his phone either. He was actually paying attention. All right. Now then, here we go. Right here, we've got a RAV resistor. We've got a brake indicator. And we've got a REVS diode in the engine. This is, these are both in the engine compartment fuse box. And this goes there. See that? See how that works? So this right here is connected to that. That's how all of that's wired in, pretty much. So when you turn it to start, you know, you're basically going to get that. And that's going to go through the, up there. Your brake indicator is only going to come on if it's grounded and all that kind of stuff. So basically, the diode's in there to keep current from back feeding this other way. All right. Now we've got your brake fluid level switch. We're looking a little bit closer here. What I used to do to see if it was a reservoir, if I want to know it's a reservoir, <coughs> you see the two colored wires right here? I just got a little piece of solder and I made a little jump and I jumped them. Just like that. So when you jump those so that that can go on through, you've, just, you've taken the ground out of the loop anyway. Basically, if you just jump it out, see the ground, even if it's grounded, it's not going to be able to make a hook through here, you know. So anyway, I hook it up here. And the black one is the ground, the switch, to, and, uh, you know, used by the switch to ground a circuit. Use a piece of solder, attach the voltmeter lead to the solder, you can monitor the voltage to pin two while you're testing. Voltmeter is what you got to use because the test lap will not burn on that. All right, all right, so here's the RABS valve right here. Uh, the RABS valve, and I basically should have made that come in there. Is a little solenoid here, 1.2 ohms, 4 ohms, 22,000 ohms. Now this is pretty cool here. Anybody got any idea why that 22,000 ohm resistor is there? Why would you put the 22,000 ohm resistor in there? What's the point in it? You got any idea? The way that it knows that this valve is disconnected is it doesn't see that 22,000 ohm resistor. And basically what it does is it puts voltage out on pin 6. And with that 22,000 ohm resistor in there, it's basically going to see a certain voltage that it's looking for right here. I even made a little table one time on my own to determine uh, what was going on whenever I had one of these that had a bad RAVS valve, because that resistor had gone bad in that RAVS valve, and it was turning on the red uh, brake light uh, and, and that kind of thing. But anyway, that's what that looks like in there. So you got dump solenoid, uh, output is going out on two wires. 
because they're wanting to make sure it's got plenty of current carrying capability. The isolation solenoid is over here. This one right here, 1.2 ohms, that's 4 ohms, and so on and so forth. There's your valve reset switch. Now that valve also, when you hit the brake, if one side or the other doesn't have enough pressure, it does that. Now, there's a little white resistor right here that caused the failure. Right there. See that? The closest diode uh, is the ABS diode, but that one right there is that resistor. A good resistor will have about 10,000 ohms. And the way that it works, and I meant to have another picture on there. I must have gone past a slide or something. Let me look. Hold on. I can show you right here, though. No big deal. Slide from the current slide. I think I saved it in here before I finished that. All right. There we go. All right. So what happens is, we'll talk about this for a second so that you don't get completely confused. You see that resistor right there? All right. Now, your brake warning light, whatever power comes here, it goes through the brake warning light to pin two. All right. Now, what happens when you mash your park brake? That light illuminates. So the voltage that was going through this, the pin two, would be interrupted if you mash the park brake. That's what was happening on this one. When the guy mashed the park brake, that voltage was going away instead of going through this resistor. See, this resistor is wired parallel with the bulb. That resistor was no good, and it was causing that to work. So in order to keep that thing from giving this problem, that little white part that I showed you over at the very end had to be replaced. Right there. That's what was wrong with it right there. And it was just a faulty when I got it out, got the meter, measured it, and it had more than 10,000 ohms, or it actually didn't have any continuity at all. And when I put another one of those on there, all of that probably had went away. But basically, the part of the, it was either either the, see, who's going to think to match the park brake after they've replaced the reservoir? Because the guy does so many reservoirs, he didn't think anything about it. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, I, th I must have a better version of this PowerPoint in there because I had a really good, concise, you know, picture of that thing. Anyway. That's what happened on that. Now, remember that Ranger has got a little, the one that y'all just stood the steering column on. There's actually a worksheet on flashing out codes on that Ranger that's part of your um, brake stuff. And you can do that really fast. A lot of these worksheets you can knock out really, really quick if you'll get on them, you know.